It's always, always awesome to have nice, big guests on the Morning Woodward Show. And actually, um, I reached out to Terry Foster months ago because uh, he wrote a tremendous article just about being in radio and um, his experience here in Detroit in the market. And it, it just touched me in a personal way that I, I DM'd him and I said, man, that like I felt what you wrote. Uh, so Terry, we've been trying to get him on for a while. And today... We have him. Terry Foster's joining us, ladies and gentlemen. Terry! Yeah, I'm glad it happened. <laughs> How you doing this morning, Terry? I'm doing fine. Um, you know, by myself in the house, no kids, no wife. So uh, my joy and pleasure is getting on Twitter and Facebook and messing with people. So, But this is going to be the highlight <laughs> of my day. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. And you promised a fedora on Twitter, and I see you're rocking it. Christmas present. I got two for Christmas, so decided to go with the black hat today, man. That's awesome. Um, so first, having you on, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, you know, I mentioned the article that you wrote, or you know, it was it was a story that you wrote essentially, and I just kind of wanted to touch base on you on that. How are you? Are you still feeling that way about your experience with the radio? Or, you know, because me and you both kind of exchanged that. Hey, sometimes they gut your creativeness, and that's why you like doing your own thing right now. How are you happiness wise right now? Uh, happiness wise, I'm very happy um, because you know I've put everything in the past in the past. Now I'm enjoying my life and. Uh, I'm an empty nester now with my wife. We're trying to figure each other out. Um, I got to bond more with my son until we send him, sent him off to college. So happiness, I'm, I'm very well. What I didn't like is after I was sick and came back to radio, I thought I was treated pretty poorly then. When I, was, when I could be productive and was coming in like this every day, I was fine. But when I was down, I, I thought that you know, I had, a, you know, a foot on my neck, and I didn't like that. But you know, for the most part, I'm I'm done with it, wearing my little fedoras, and um, <laughs> just kind of enjoying life. But I, I, need well, I definitely to miss do, hearing your opinions. I <clears throat> Right. I definitely miss hearing your opinions daily. I'm glad that you are so active on Twitter and, you know, some of the things that you ask, we kind of wanted to touch on this morning, too, because, I mean, I steal some of my show prep from you, man, because you ask such great questions. Joey's got one for you. Go ahead, Joey. And first off, Terry, I just want to say that I respect that so much because, I mean, that's the one thing that we all got to really put first is ourself. And anytime you feel a certain way, you got to do what's right for you. So I commend you on that, Terry. Okay. And, and by the way, stick. It's not stealing; it's sampling. So I always remember that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm P Diddy of, of the content. Right. Hey, so so Terry, man. First question, and I know high school sports means a lot to you, and it's just been something these last couple of months where we all just feel so bad for the kids. And we saw with football where MHSA they postpone it, they bring it back, they postpone it, and then all of a sudden they finish the MHSAA state playoffs and state championships in the middle of January. Why don't we get to see basketball happening? Well, of course, you'd have to ask the governor, but here is my opinion. It makes no sense to play football games in January and volleyball games in January, and you can't play basketball or hockey or something like that. Um, here is my advice to the governor, if she's listening. Don't just ha have your people make decisions. Don't just have your doctors and everything make decisions. I want to see everybody be in on the decision-making process. That includes Democrats, Republicans, uh, congressmen, senators, everybody. Because we have to figure out some way to make this whole thing work. Um, you probably didn't read my blog today, but my blog today is about teenage suicide and, and, and kids in school committing suicide because they don't have that connection with people. They're isolated. And uh, we have to figure out a compromise on how we eliminate or minimize COVID, COVID how we get back together again how we stimulate this economy and 
I, I don't think you can do it just by having Republicans make the decision. You can't do it by just having Democrats make the decision. And, and we all need to be on the decision making process some way, somehow, so we can reach a compromise. And I, I think they should be playing basketball in high school. Um, because, um, you know, a lot of these kids, meet, you know, are, are in position for scholarships. I know if my kid was a senior and he could hoop, I'd be pissed now. I said, damn, he can finally show what he can do, and now the schools aren't going to be able to watch him. I don't understand how 49 other states can play, and this one can't. Confused. Yeah, it's it's sad, anything. too, for the basketball players because they got their playoffs ripped away from them last year yeah. in March, and now it's spending over into this season, too. So it's I feel bad for a junior last year, couldn't even play his playoffs, and now he's not even going to be able to play his senior. And like you said, that affects mental health so much. Hey, Terry, yeah, hey, think about there's, gonna... there's some kid who was a star sophomore player on the junior varsity team, which – Okay, fine. But we don't get to see if he can play varsity. We don't see see if he's division one, division two, or D division three player or not a player at all. So that's gotta be very disappointing and upsetting because let's face facts. I know we're in school for academics, but some of these kids are in it for sports. And the only way they can make it in the world, the only way they can make it in college is if they can show they can play basketball. It's a sad thing, but it's our reality. Hey, Terry, I want to kind of pivot, to get, pivot real quick, and thanks for joining the show. So, okay. as we all know, Matthew Stafford is on his way out the door. I want to know, why do you feel that he has such a mixed perception amongst fans in the city? Uh, because I think people see that he has talent, but he hasn't produced. And my theory on that is the biggest detriment to Matthew Stafford is he plays for the Detroit Lions. People forget how awful this franchise is because I talk to young people and they say, oh, the Lions have been terrible for five years. No, that's bullshit. They've been, they've been terrible for 60 years. They were even <laughs> bad in the 90s when they underachieved with Barry Sanders. So this is the, I, I'd have to say, one of the worst five organizations in all of professional sports. And, and, and let's look back. There's only one man on the face of the earth who can say he won a playoff game as a Lions quarterback. And that's Eric Kramer. And guess what? They ran his ass out of town, too. Uh, he it's just, it's so this, painful this, this that Eric Kramer is our winningest playoff quarterback. <laughs> so painful. With one. <laughs> Ugh, God. Uh, well, stick it on the Lions. How do you feel about Dan Campbell's kneecap message? I mean, did, did that resonate with you? Because Corey was under the opinion that, like, the rest of the nation doesn't understand that talk. But in Detroit, like, that's how we talk here. It is the way we talk. But you know what? With his kneecap comment and, you know, saying the word shit and his old macho man thing, he actually had a good message that we all missed. Uh, when, when he was talking about the Lions, and, and I go by um, my interactions with people in the NFL, I always ask the question, what's wrong with the Detroit Lions? How, and they said, they're not going to win until they figure out two things. One is they've got to draft players to negate Aaron Rodgers. They've got to draft players that negate the Chicago Bears defense. They've got to draft players that make them – the top dog in their division. Don't worry about the rest of the NFL. Worry about your division. Second thing they said, exploit your opponent's weaknesses. And we're only talking about Minnesota, Chicago, and Green Bay. Dan Campbell pretty much said the same thing when he said that uh, we got to exploit the weaknesses of other teams. And that was all lost in this whole thing. Um, because, you know, he's a pretty fiery guy and he's a spirited guy. But because of those words, I'm going to give him a credence of, of believability. I, I don't buy the whole kneecap thing and, and uh, you know, we're going to bust you up. We're going to get up the second and third time. We're going to be the last one standing. That's a man who 
gave the Lions what they wanted. I think uh, Sheila Fort Hamp, and uh, they wanted someone who's spirited, somebody who was macho and strong and could talk, and, and, and he gave them that. But he also said something very important, which might work in the future. We're going to exploit other teams' weaknesses. That's what I caught out of that press conference. In the next three years, do you think the Lions will have a playoff win under him? Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> was I too blunt about that? Did I say that too quickly? No. I think the next Never, time, man. Never. <laughs> Terry, that's what you got to understand about this. We're on the internet now. Like when you said shit earlier, it's okay. We can say all those things and be as blunt as we want. So, man, just have fun, let loose, and let's go. The next two years are going to be brutal for the Lions. I think year three, they might be a borderline playoff team. Will probably get in, but will they win? No, they won't. It's just, it's a bad roster. Um, they have they have to build through the draft again, and I hate to say this word, um, you know, it's a rebuild again, which is a shame. And Lion fans don't deserve this. When they fired Detroit Jim doesn't. Caldwell. That should have been the, the the group that took them to the next level. Now we're talking rebuild again, and that's a damn shame. But you know, and I mean the next the next this? big thing that's happening is Matthew Stafford. You know, obviously we all know that he is no longer going to be with Detroit. Uh, I we all that that's that just shows a lot about Matthew Stafford. Is everybody saying, you know what? I, w- I want Stafford to go out and go get his W elsewhere. And then I saw you tweeting saying, hey, are we going to be rooting for Matthew Stafford in his new destination like we did Justin Verlander in Houston? What's your take on that, Terry? My take on it is, for the most part, no. Um, people were rooting for Justin Verlander to get his. Um, his ring because I think he resonated more in the community because he took him to the World Series twice. Justin Verlander did something. Matthew Stafford gave us a lot of stats. You know, he, you know, we talk about how tough he is and everything, but for the, but for the most part, what did he and the Detroit Lions give you? Nothing. Because we have a fan base here that is so pathetic. Here's what they talk about. You know, I think we can win some football games. Who cares? If you're not in it to win a championship or at least compete for a championship, why are you even in the ball game? I don't care about winning football games. I care about winning championships, competing for championships. But it's the mentality we have. Stafford, for the most part, got paid a lot of money, but for the most part did not give the fans what they wanted. So I don't think they're going to... um, resonate with him like they did uh with justin verlander yeah i i mean personally i'm gonna root for stafford not not quite as hard as verlander because to me like I, I said this on the show earlier in the week verlander is the closest i ever saw to nolan ryan in a tiger's uniform like i loved justin verlander i like stafford as a quarterback but to me verlander is a surefire hall, hall of famer he's the guy that needed that world series just to cement him as one of the greatest of all time I, I tell you what, if uh, and this could happen, if Stafford comes back with the San Francisco 49ers and uh, he's got the ball and he's trailing the Lions by uh, four oh. points, do you want him to succeed or do you want him to throw an interception? Oh, if he's playing the Lions, fuck him. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter. If you playing the Lions, I don't care who you are. You can be my own brother. I still want you to lose. Uh, uh, speaking of Justin Verlander, um, the Baseball Hall of Fame for the first time since 1960 is not going to have a Hall of Fame inductee. Uh, I think that's a crazy, crazy stat. And how do you feel about Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, and now the whole Kurt Schilling thing? Well, if I were a voter, which I'm not, I would vote for Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, who's the best pitcher I've seen in my lifetime. I'm not saying he's the best pitcher of forever. He's the best pitcher I've seen when I started, since I started following baseball. I'll have them all in. And um, here, here's the main reason. When Barry Bonds and Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire, when they were doing steroids, baseball knew that. Um, the commissioner knew it. 
The managers knew it. The players knew it. So what does baseball do? We're going to promote it more because our fan base was falling off at that time. So we're going to promote the home runs. We're going to promote these guys. and Everybody is complicit in this little scheme. So I would just let them in. And, you know, in baseball, what, what was the old saying with baseball? If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. You ain't so trying. baseball's been cheating for years, and um, I'm not going to punish these guys. I'm putting it, I would put them in. What do you think about Kurt Schilling not getting in, not really because of steroids, but because of his, you know, political opinions, really? I think Kurt Schilling even realizes he may not be a Hall of Famer. He's borderline. Mm. He was a very good pitcher and everything. But is he a Hall of Fame pitcher? Kurt Schilling will even tell you that maybe I'm not that. So I think his political views played a little bit of a role. Um, the asshole aspect of his life played a little bit of a role. But the other thing was, is he really a Hall of Fame pitcher? And I think uh, when you talk about baseball, if you have to debate if somebody's in a, a Hall of Famer, it means he's not a Hall of Famer. I like that. I want to stay on the Hall of Fame subject and just put, put a different sport. So <laughs> Calvin Johnson, we're, we know he's on the ballot and he's going to be up to be a first ballot um, Hall of Famer. If he's selected as a first ballot Hall of Famer, do you think that adds public pressure on the Lions to repair that relationship with him before he goes in? I, I, I think the public pressure is already there. Um, if if he's in the Hall of Fame first ballot, I think I think they will pull that check out and pay him. Just say, here, here, buddy, boy, here you go. And and he's going to be an ambassador for the Lions. Uh, he'll be doing little silly things for them. And uh, this whole thing is ridiculous. Um, but I know why the Lions didn't pay him. Because this franchise is so bad that if they – didn't ask for money for Calvin, there'd be a whole bunch of other guys in that locker room who want to get out before their contracts are up, would just leave. And, uh, you know, but if you have the threat of I'm going to take your money, they won't do that. So the Lions did that to keep control of their dressing room, to keep control of the guys who probably want out and uh, I think that was a major reason they didn't give Calvin his money. Now, with Calvin, um, something interesting again with Calvin. They're honoring Matthew Stafford's request to be let go and be traded somewhere else. But, you know, there have been reports, out, whether they're true or not, that Calvin would have still played if he would have been, been able to go to a different winning team. And the same thing with Barry Sanders. Why do you think they're honoring Matthew Stafford's request as opposed to theirs? Because Calvin and Barry just walked away. They said, fuck it, we're done. Barry went to <laughs> over to Europe. Calvin was talking about his hands and how beaten up he was. And uh, Calvin would have played for another team, but, you know, the Lions didn't wouldn't release him. They, they had no interest in trading him or, or giving him what he wanted. But at least Matthew Stafford has given him the opportunity to get some draft equity, get some draft picks. Um whatever so I, I think Calvin I, I'm Matthew is the only one who said I want out but I want to be traded and if I can make your team better I'm all for it Barry and Calvin said see ya we're out of here <laughs> so they off the organization. yeah they pissed off of the organization they had no interest in helping the Lions become better so fact, speaking said, of the Lions Barry, getting better, uh, speaking of the Lions right, no, getting better, what do you think of all these coaches taking lateral moves to come to Detroit now? Like just last night, we got the new linebacker coach from Chicago. He came over here to be our linebacker coach. Deuce Staley left uh, Philadelphia to come take the same position here. Why do you think Dan Campbell's able to recruit these guys to take lateral moves like they're not moving up? Uh, must be the kneecaps. They want to bust some kneecaps. <laughs> I think this guy is such a great salesman that he can get you in a room and convince you to do anything. Now, there's one key. Will he be able to convince that locker room to, to go through a, a, a wall for him? 
I think he convinced the fan base. He obviously convinced coaches to do that. But can he convince the players? Um, I think Dan Campbell is a, is a very strong personality. And here is my here is my philosophy about the Lions, and this is probably why he got hired. I thought, you know, people were saying, well, you need a great X's and O's guy to bring in here. You need a coordinator. I thought this. You needed someone in that locker room, because every locker room is different. You needed somebody in there that was going to motivate these players, that these players believed in. And um, because when they had Jim Caldwell, I know he had his problems with X's and O's. I thought the, I, I thought it was risky to let him go because the Lions were not a good football team but those guys believed in Jim Caldwell. They played beyond their pay grade for Jim Caldwell. Stafford did. And then as soon as you, you brought in uh, Patricia, you saw the production disintegrate. Because Patricia came in saying, I am Bill Belichick. Players saw through that. You can't, you can't fool players. They, they saw that it was fake. They saw this isn't who he was. And they just... They just, they just tuned out. So what the Lions did is instead of bringing in a technician or an X's and O's guy, they're trying to get somebody to breathe life into that, that locker room, that dressing room, because it's, it's pretty much dead there. Guys don't want to play. Yeah, I feel like we're back near the Jim Schwartz era where we just got to bring in the rah-rah guy to get everybody like back on board, and hopefully then we can grow from there. But we locked this guy up for six years, so we got a rah-rah guy for six years. Well, I have to look at his contract further. I'm sure they can get out of it after three or four years, which they usually are able to do. But I, I think, once again, he is a salesman. He sold the Fords. He sold... Uh, Ron Wood, Rod Wood, and uh, he sold Chris Spielman, and um, so that's why he's able to get six years. But we'll, you know, he's got to sell the players. That's that's a real big if. Well, Terry, uh, uh, we can't thank you enough for joining the Morning Woodward Show this morning. We're getting all types of comments in our section right now, like, bring Terry back on every week. Can we get Terry on Woodward Sports Network once a week? Terry can do a show called Let the Bitch Walk, and we can do couples therapy here. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we appreciate we you again? coming on, man. Okay, let's talk again. If you want an old half-been like me as part of the crew sometime or whatever, uh, I'm I'm up for it. Yeah, well, it's great to see your face, man. It's great to finally connect on this. I know we've been trying to for a couple of months now. So I got your number now, and whenever you got something to say, you call us and let us know, hey, I got something to say today, I want on the show, and then I'll reach out to you also and bring you back as much as we can because I love your opinions, I love your takes, and I just appreciate everything you've done for Detroit sports. More importantly, we love that I fedora, though, Terry. If, yeah. I call, fire. <laughs> if I call, you can't hang up the phone on me now. <laughs> <laughs> never, man, never. Hey, Ter Terry's gonna be like the new Instagram influencer, like with a swipe up to get this fedora. <laughs> uh, Terry, where can people read your blog? Uh, Terry Foster dot blog. I um, it's part of my therapy because I was sick a few years ago. One of my uh, doctors told he said that you should write a blog, uh, do something to get whatever off your chest. He said that's good for you. So that's, that's pretty much what I do, and I like to communicate stuff to people. It's a fantastic blog, and like I said, the one you wrote about radio and your time at the past radio station that you worked for and, you know, just how, like, people treated you different when you came back and how you felt like your creativity was being taken away from you. Like, that was part of the whole reason we started Woodward Sports Network. So I, I felt you when you wrote that blog, so thank you for writing it. I appreciate it. Thanks for reading, and uh, hopefully we will see you guys again, and do not hang up the phone on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Terry, have a great one, man.